Awesome. Well, welcome to another Claim Machine Facebook Live. I'm really excited because this is my very first uh, live interview. So, and of course, I wouldn't want anybody else on for my first guest besides Corinne Sutton, a good friend. And I want to read you his bio real quick because it's pretty impressive. So Corinne Sutton is a three-time pro natural bodybuilder, certified master fitness trainer, certified sports nutritionist, international lecturer, owner of Body HD Fitness, head judge for the World Vegan Bodybuilding Championship, and the Team Clean Machine Ambassador, uh, amongst other things. But I want to keep it short enough so we can move on to some talking. But uh, quite some accomplishments there, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, man. So um, first off, I want to say happy birthday. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Yeah, 35. 35 now? Yeah. Wow. That's 20. as long as I've been vegan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's great. Happy birthday, my friend. That's great. You. Uh, you don't look a day over 20. <laughs> but a lot smarter than 20, I'm sure, right? Yeah, yeah way smarter. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, this month, I, I was just looking at your notes, and I, I see that this month in June of 2011 is when you heard uh, Mr. Yurovsky uh, speak, and it really changed your life. Why don't you talk about that moment? Yeah. So, um, so like at during that time, I was in school. I was, and uh, just to recap a little bit, uh, a little bit far back in history, I was in the military for about eight years. So I did uh, four years in the United States Marine Corps, uh, fully active service, also deployed to Operation Iraqi Freedom, uh, three and four. And then after that, I moved into the U.S. Navy Reserves. So during that time when I was in the reserves, I was going to school and I was going to school for criminal justice at the time. And one of my prerequisites was public speaking. And my instructor or professor, he invited Gary Roski as a special guest speaker. And I, I didn't know who this guy was. Like, I didn't, I had zero idea what he was going to bring on the table when he came to speak until he, he said like, yeah, I'm going to talk about veganism. So when he brought that up, you know, I was pretty enticed because I never, I never even heard the term before. Like I always heard like vegetarian, vegetarian and you know, I had friends, a very few friends that was vegetarian, but no, I never met anybody that was like vegan, like 100% plant-based diet. So I was pretty enticed with that. And I was like, oh, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'm down to listen to see what he has to say. Because the, the only time I actually heard, I mean, I heard the term, but to me, it was just like hippies and stuff. And, you know, I was in the military, so I never met any hippies in the military. So, you know, <laughs> you know so it was not not heard of and he started his speech he started talking about animal rights the ethics of animals uh health reasons why a lot of uh, alternative like meat alternatives that's out there and when he talked about everything it kind of summed up to me where it was like you know this is something that i might want to try out and it wasn't just because of the health stuff it was all the videos he showed when it came to all the harm and the pain and the suffering, all the torturing when it came to the animals. And when I saw how I'm like, when I saw how animals actually reached my plate, I was like, damn, like all this happens before the animal actually hits my plate. So it definitely blew my perspective when, or my imagination, it's not even perspective. It's like, it's, it was total imagination. And I think everyone else has the imagination just like mine, where it was like, man, like I, I thought animals were raised on, on a farm with grass and, you know, happy cows, happy chickens, you know, and that's how I get my food in. And when they kill a cow, you know, imagination working, oh, it's the old cow, you know, they're probably old or sick or whatever, you know, just making up stuff. Because I never really asked myself how the, I never really even asked or watched the whole process. So when I actually saw it, it just, it just kind of 
like to me it just woke me up and i was just like wow like this is really bad if this is happening and then and everything he said made sense like when you talk, when you talk about mass production i mean he was like how do you think they can be how, how do you think manufacturers and, and beef companies and, and chicken companies and um, turkey, eggs, dairy, how do you think they can have that demand and right. be able to produce all that product for right. everyone can be pleased? And and when he said that, it made sense because, you know, you're talking to a guy who ate meat his whole entire life, you know, especially being in the military, it's all about drinking beer and eating meat yep. mentality. And I mean, and you're talking to a guy who used to go to like, uh, you know, Brazilian steakhouse buffets all the time. Right. Uh, to go to, I, I just had in my mind like a, I mean, this sounds bad, but it's like, like barbecue ribs, like pork ribs, like all you can eat buffets and things like that. Like all these big events of eating meat and drinking wine and, and you know, that culture. And it kind of just blew everything out of proportion when I realized that. And at the same time, when I saw the animals being tortured and beat up and abused, and people could sit here and say like, well, not all animals are abused. Well, you know, if you create an atmosphere when you're, all you do is kill animals, uh, more likely abusing animals gonna come with it. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't just come out normally saying like well i kill animals for a living <laughs> and, you know, like i i just don't think that's is possible because even with me being in the military like i'm trained to kill right you know and I, my mentality before was a lot different than it is now so right. leaving that type of atmosphere i can see how my mentality was different from then and now right. so i Imagine when you're actually like, and I'm not like killing people. Like I never killed anyone while I was in the military, but I was in combat. I did witness a lot of violence. Yeah, I had teammates who died in war and out of war. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all through the the mentality. Like some some of my friends died because of drug abuse, and right. this was from um, being in war. It, it was right. linked, connected. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can tell like. You know, just if if I had friends who was just in combat for a couple of months, right. which came out to their life, to their grave, I mean, how can a, a, a person who works on the kill floor every day right. be safe? Yeah, you know I'm it's, saying it's a devaluation of life. I mean, yeah. you know, slaughterhouse workers are some of the highest suicide rates in the country for job hazards. And, and when you're surrounded by death all the time, it just really devalues life itself. Um, yeah. And I think on some subconscious level, at least, even if you're not aware of it, by consuming that, you're, that's low vibration food. And, and you're, you're taking that on to some degree, whether, whether you're aware of it or not. And that's one of the wonderful things about adding more plant-based nutrition into your life is that you can feel that shift. You can feel that difference. Now, you went through those changes, and then you decided to really start getting in better shape. And when you did, what what was that day like where you said, I'm going to take this to the stage? What was that moment like for you? When did that click? So, so like, first, after, this, after the whole speech, I, I went pescatarian, to make a long story short. Like, I was going to go vegan, but then I ended up going pescatarian because there wasn't a lot of information out there to, you know, the famous vegan question where you get your protein. So right. I had a good idea, you know, you're talking to like a Marine, right? <laughs> Trying to figure out nutrition. And right. I'm just like, I don't, I don't know where to get this protein. And Gary Roski sent me some links like adapt.org and stuff like that, but it wasn't enough at the time. You know, it, it was just a lot of really tell the truth. It was a lot of processed foods. Yeah. They show and when it came to Whole Foods, because that was the only that was the only place in 2011 that had that stuff, yeah, mm-hmm. it was super expensive. You're talking about like eight dollars yeah. for a, a, a little packet of tofurkey deli meats, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's not like now where you get three bucks. It was like eight dollars back then, and I'm yeah. like in college, so I'm like, yo, this is way too expensive, man, for some deli meat. 
<laughs> so I was like, it has to yeah. be another way. So yeah. I went pescatarian. Um, it, and if y'all don't know what pescatarian is, just eating seafood. But mm-hmm. I, I wasn't eating anything from the land, though. So no eggs, no dairy, and no no any type of land animal. That that was totally out of my diet. So I was consuming more rice, more beans, more vegetables, and I was doing this the fish for protein. Then I started th- once I started consuming that, I started feeling a lot better. You know, mm-hmm. because the majority of my diet was plant based already. You know, I was only getting protein from fish, but then everything else was coming from plant based. So I was already feeling a cleanse from that. I started losing body fat. I started getting a lot, a lot leaner. I started seeing a six pack for first for the first time, like yeah. without even trying, you know. Mm-hmm. And my performance was coming up. Um, everything it was just great. And then after that, I think it was like just a couple months. I started seeing the change. I started feeling the change. Then my mentality started to change too. Mm-hmm. And and I just had. You know, and I want to tell you the truth. Like I was like partying a lot during that time because I was in. It was like I was in college and I was trying to make up like the years that I missed because I joined the military when I was seventeen. Yeah. So I was trying to make up like some of the years that I missed as as a teenager. Uh, and yeah, I was partying, having fun. I wanted that college experience. And then uh, after that, what ended up happening was I just got to a point one day where I was like, I- I'm not happy where I'm at right now. You know what I mean? And I started thinking about like the career that I was in. I started thinking about uh, even the education I was learning. And I was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not really that happy. And, and I felt, I felt like it was just because I was in a, a bad place and, and also through the food and through the, and, and the cleanse and everything, I just felt healthier. I started getting that like a clarity. So after that, I ended up, um, yeah, you know, I was like, uh, I didn't want to be in the military anymore. First, first of all, I didn't, I, I didn't want to be in the military because I was just like, I'm always around violence and stuff, and it's just always about death and killing and blood and killing people. Like, because I was a part of combat unit in both both branches, so I was I was just getting tired of that. And then after that, I was like, you know, maybe criminal justice thing isn't something that I want to do. So. I just started thinking about things and then, you know, I saw, I was reading a, actually a GI jobs magazine. It's like a, a military magazine that has like jobs and it tells you like the type of jobs you can do when you get out. Also it tells you uh, schools you can do. And that's when I decided to go into uh, a transfer school. I was doing a hybrid school online and uh, going to a bar college. And I was like, you know, let me do like this fitness stuff because when I, you know you read this little ad and it's like, do you like working out? Do you like <laughs> doing, uh, you know, being in shape and eating healthy? I'm like, yeah, I always love that stuff, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like when I saw that, it was on GI Jobs for uh, this is the school I graduated in, uh, which is the International Sports Science Association. It's located in California. I just signed up to their online school, finished the prerequisites in Broward College, and then ended up going full time at the school here and and I decided to change my whole major. I was like, you know, I might have to spend another year in school, but screw it. Like, you know, it's something that I'm going to love, it's something I'm going to do. And once I started taking the classes, I started, that's when things started to click. Cause I started finding like tofu, tempeh, seitan. I started finding out more nice. about vegan proteins. And I was like, started eliminating the fish. The more I learned about the protein, I was like, oh, I don't need this stuff anymore. And one day I just started eating just 100% plant based. And then after a year being vegan, I had a couple friends who was like, hey, man, like you should be a bodybuilder, man. You look great. Now, by this time, I've already took a couple classes. I got certified as a trainer. I started working for a small gym, small boutique gym. So I was like getting into the scene of fitness for, uh, for the first time. I started really liking it. and when my friends told me that, I was like, you know what? I don't know if, if I can do it. And they're like, dude, you you have the physique. You could definitely do it. And, you know, I was like kind of crazy about it because when you hear bodybuilding, the first thing you think if you don't know bodybuilding is like people like Ronnie Coleman and Darren Jackson 
Benz and like all these Arnold Schwarzenegger, all these Jack, you know, really Jack. Yeah. Big, yeah. And I was like, I, 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 how can I even get that big? I was like, you know, I was like, these guys taste like steroids and shit. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Like there's no way I can get that big. And I'm not, I'm not willing to do that. But they were like, nah, they have like natural leagues and stuff. So I was like, oh, think about it. Now, I went to a club again, right? <laughs> I, was, I went to another club uh, like sometime that week when my friends told me about it. And then that's when you, you probably already know him. You, yeah, you do know him, Dave. You know, that's why I met Dave. Yeah. I met Dave in the club, right? <laughs> and, and then. A fellow bodybuilder. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, and he was actually dating one of, my, one of the friends that I knew at the time. And she introduced me to him like, hey, he's a coach. He does bodybuilding. And I never even told this, this woman that I, I was interested yeah, in bodybuilding. So you know how sometimes like the universe kind of like put opportunities in front of you? Yeah. So it, it was literally like that. And I was like, what? You know, like I didn't even told this girl about Bodybuilding. So I talked to him a little bit, got his number, you know, that Monday, I, I texted him. I was like, because I was looking online, everything was super expensive. I was like, all right, let me call him up. Call him up. He's like, yeah, you could do bodybuilding. And and I thought like, well, this could be a great opportunity because one, there wasn't really a lot of bodybuilders. It was the only people that I knew at the time when I, because I mean, I'm only a, a one year vegan. And the only book I read in that one year was uh, the book from Robert Sheik, The Vegan Bodybuilding Fitness. So the only person I knew was Robert Sheik, Danny, Danny, uh, oh man, I can't, Danny Taylor, uh, Giacomo Mercedes, and also uh, Tori Washington. So those are the only people that I knew from reading that book that actually did. So it was no one really else doing it. And so I was like, you know what, if these guys can do it, then shit, like, let me do it. And I started working with Dave after a couple of months working with him. You know, I won my first trophy. I think I got second place in my first show at the AMBF. And then after that, I think the second, second show, I got like first place in novice. And, you know, I just started winning top three. I think after the second or third show, that's when you hit me up mm-hmm. to uh, join Clean Machine. Cause I was posting in the vegan bodybuilding group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At first it was like, like Fridays and stuff. Yeah. And then next thing you know, like I'm posting my wins. And that's when you you hit hit me up. Yeah, and I, I saw right away, I'm like, wow, this guy has an ideal classic physique. Your yeah. body shape proportion, you worked really hard to get where you're at, I know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, this guy's this guy's going places. I know it. <laughs> So, you know, and that's when I, uh, you know, connected with you. And and then we met at uh, Loving Hut Vegan Restaurant. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and uh, we agreed. To, uh, we struck up a friendship that's been going on for six and a half years now. Yeah. So back in 2013, we met at the restaurant and uh, you said you'd come on board with us. And that was when we had one little product, yeah. <laughs> Sub <Sub-like> Lucky. <80. laughs> still, still love that product. But, yeah, it's um, my favorite one. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, you joined the team, and then you went on to win three pro cards. So, yeah. so now that you've got pro cards, you're considered one of the top natural bodybuilders out there. I know I've gotten this too, but you probably even more because your physique is really impressive. And to accomplish what you've accomplished, both natural, that means no performance enhancing drugs, no steroids or HGH or none of that. Um, without that, you've accomplished things that most people probably will never accomplish, to be honest. Um, yeah. and you did it on a completely vegan diet. So how did you respond when people started challenging you in disbelief? Well, you can't get like that natural or you can't get like that as a vegan. You know, how did you deal with that? I mean, at, at, in the beginning, like this, this wasn't even before. There, I, I, I was getting more of the negative remarks before uh, I'd even thought about bodybuilding and I was just testing it out, you know? Mm-hmm. So like during my experimental stages, that's when I was getting the most hate, the most hate, especially when I went 
completely plant based. Because when I was vegetarian, I, it wasn't that much. Because when I would go out, I would just order seafood, you know, like so. Right. It, 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 I could. It was easy to blend in, you know what I'm right. saying. But once I decided to cut the cut the seafood and I went straight plant based, that's when I got the most heat. But it wasn't that aggressive, I, I, and I think it was only because I was going. I didn't know about vegan restaurants at the time. You know, I, I don't even think a Happy Cow even existed during that time. Uh, or I didn't know about it, but I was going to the same places with the same friends, and I was ordering things from like, like I want to tell you the first restaurant I went to as a vegan, like when I was one hundred percent vegan, was Roadhouse Grill. It's a steakhouse. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm ordering French fries, rice, and string beans because <laughs> right. you know, yeah. you know, well. they, they made fun of me, but the only that I was like, well, look at my bill, it's like freaking six dollars, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know you and your appetite. You eat some you eat some hefty servings of food, brother. Yeah. You can pack in that food. But I mean you in switching to good food, there is a big difference. And and I can see that's probably where body HD came in because I mean people see you like scarfing down two full pizzas and then see you, you know, ripped on stage. They're like, how can you do that? And I'm sure that's a question you get a lot. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's the way you train and it's the way you manage your calories and your macros throughout. And and talk to me about body HD, how that came about. And I know you're getting questions all the time. Corinne, what do you eat? Corinne, how do you work out? Well, body HD was a great answer to that, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So, like, body HD fitness pretty much came up because I was working for a small boutique gym. And I was I was dating, dating like, an ex-girlfriend at the time. And she, she was actually, uh, you know, giving me ideas because she was like, Corinne, I think you're really good. I think you should open up your own thing, you know. And I mean, and I didn't have all the knowledge back then. I was still in school. So I was like, no, nah, I like working for uh, the gym was called NRG Fitness. Uh, and his name's Pete, Pete, Peter Ware. He was my mentor at the time. So like, I was like, I like working for Pete. You know, he's cool. Like, but she saw something more from me than anything else. And she was like, yo, you should open up your own thing. So I was like, uh, I don't know. And then, you know, she was like, well, you know, it, at least start off with a company's name. You know, at least start off with that, like a fictitious right. name so so you can do it. So I was like, all right, well, I just went with it because I kind of just like, all right, whatever, you know, like whatever. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't really taking it seriously, but I was like, all right, yeah, cool. Yeah, I start, start with a fictitious name, whatever. So like uh, we're we're just literally just sitting around thinking the names with a couple of friends, and um, you know it, we we all kind of collectively came up with the name. It, we were just shouting out words, and yeah. The next thing you know, um, yeah, and I think I think where the HD came from was because someone said like uh, something body, and I was like, no, it has to be something that's now, something that's catchy, you know. And I think the HD TVs was like the right. big thing during that time. So like, the, yeah, the flat screens and all the HD quality. So I was like, yo, what about, and then I remember saying like, what about body HD because you're making your body like high def. Yeah, <laughs> high definition. And definitely you got some amazing definition in your position. Yeah. So, no, it makes perfect sense. I mean, uh, and I think that's what a lot of people want, but they just don't know how to make that happen. And yeah. so talk about what services that you offer through Body HD so that people, if they want to reach out to you, really want to transform their bodies. Because it really does. There's there's some, you've learned some lessons along the way of what to do and what not to do. And in that learning, plus you're a certified master fitness trainer and a certified nutritionist, you have the both the background and the academics, but you also have your you know three pro cards on stage to prove you can accomplish what you do and how you get it dialed in. So what kind of services do you offer people through Body HD Fitness? So so Body HD evolved a lot through time, but now we're a full online company. Like we don't do any type of in-person training anymore. 
So everything is literally online, which, which I, I tell you the truth, I think it goes well with the name for these, for these times. So like everything's like a hundred percent online and I have a program, which is the most popular program. It's a 16 week transformation program that comes with uh, customized meal plans, customized workout plans, tons of accountability and support, like tons. Uh, when it comes to the accountability, we have a lot of face-to-face -face, uh, talks, just like this, like virtual talks in awesome. our, within the program. So you can feel connected. You, you don't feel alone. You don't feel like a number. And truthfully, I just don't like doing emails. So, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> so, so like, I have clients like, do you just do emails? Cause there's trainers who just like likes writing email. I was like, I hate emails. So <laughs> let's um, get on and chat it out. Right. Well, yeah, and then you have real back and forth. It's just not idea send, wait, idea send, you know. Yeah, yeah. I can't, yo, I will go, I will have a headache waking up with like freaking over a hundred different emails with tons of questions. And I'm filling that out every single day. Like, that, right. I was going to say, I'd rather just talk to you in person, you yeah. know, joke around, build an actual relationship, you yeah. know, especially yeah. during the time like with the COVID and the quarantine. Right. Yeah. Who wants to be reading a bunch of emails and, and like scripted stuff on directions? Like there's no emotion, there's no connection in right. that. There's right. more connection when you actually see my face, you can hear the expression and the tone of my voice. And I could I, I think I could get my point across a lot faster versus you know writing an email or just sending you a bunch of text messages. So there's tons of that. And then we also have a, a support, I mean sorry. A private Facebook group and our classes. So I have a private Facebook group. It's a really small community and I want to keep it small because I don't want it like super huge because I feel like when you have small groups, you everyone gets more attention. It's yeah. just like I, I, I think about Facebook groups, like especially private ones for like a, like a school, like right. who learns more in the school? A, right. a big university with like over a hundred and something uh, uh, students yeah. or a small classroom with like 20 students. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. People, the students want to be more, um, you know, be able to learn more. Their Facebook group is like a hundred and something people, but like, you know, it's, it's, that's considered small for Facebook. You know what I'm saying? So I like keeping it like that. And then also at the same time, we have the classes. So uh, the vir and, and the classes are virtual just like this. So, yeah. these classes so you can learn more about nutrition health and fitness so a lot of people don't do that stuff or willing to teach and I feel like the more you actually learn then you're going to create good habits and then make it more of a lifestyle because if fitness isn't your lifestyle then you're always going to have a fluctuation in weight and stuff like that so you're you know you're accomplished bodybuilder and, and fitness trainer. Now you've got your, your vegan entrepreneur, uh, got your own uh, plant-based business. Um, and then you started getting invitations uh, to the international stage. You yeah. got uh, filming for a TV show in the UK. You went to South America and were a guest speaker, one of the veg events. Talk about that a little bit. Um, how it was going to other countries and getting in front of the camera, getting in front of these big stages of people and dealing with whole different cultures. Yeah, well, for, for the TV shows, that was fun. I was I was on a BBC One and BBC Three iPlayer vegan bill. Now, this is a, a three-part reality reality show documentary that's it's a bunch of vegans together. Uh, one of the famous vegans that was on the show was uh, Joey Carbstrong. Uh, he, yeah, he's a big uh, vegan activist, so he was part of that show, plus other other vegan, um, I guess you could call them, uh, not fitness enthusiasts, but uh, vegan, Not they're not activists, but vegan, like we have a foodie, a cook, and uh, an actor, you know, so we had, we had different other vegans from uh, different places, and working with the team and being on a show was really fun. Uh, being on camera was fun. I, I'll see if you're on social media, like you, you have to love the camera. <laughs> and, and, and for me, like I loved it because it's different than when I'm making like these, I, I make like, you know, you know, I make tons of like 
meal prep videos and, and workout mm -hmm. videos. But see the difference between that and doing an actual, uh, you actually have a TV production team is like, you're only there to perform. So it, it, it takes a lot of stress off your shoulders and you can just be you versus I'm the camera guy. I'm the editor. I'm the, I'm the, uh, you know, right. I'm the, exactly. load it up. Man. Like I don't have to deal with nothing. I just had to show up, you know, have a smile on my face and, and action, you know, right. and that's, it. so it was great. And, and being out into, I was in uh, Cardiff in the UK and the, and the town was Cardiff. We were there to try to convince the whole town to go be wow. so, pretty interesting yeah. <laughs> that's cool well uh, i know it's your birthday and and uh you're doing a nice give back we're doing a give back all month on clean machine online for um dharma bear rescue uh so our good friends uh who run super fit jim uh, uh julian and yvonne but i know you are also doing a give back for your birthday you want to talk about that with cj acres yeah 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 so uh is it cj acres I don't think so. Yeah, CJ Acres Animal Rescue. Is that the one you're doing? Uh, no, I think that was last year. I think I'm doing, uh, let me see. This, let me make sure. I want to just make sure on that. No, it's Kindred Spirits. Kindred so, Spirits, right on. Yeah. So uh, Kindred Spirits is located in Florida. I, I forgot the actual town of Sam, but um, I went there a couple months ago before the whole quarantine. Mm -hmm. And it's a really cool place. Um, and actually, the, the main reason I went there is just because I trained uh, two people that was there. Um, oh, cool. Works there. So mm -hmm. they were my clients. And I told them, like, yeah, I'm down to go there, you know, meet some of the animals, see what you do. And, and it was really cool. Like, the animals are treated very nicely. Uh, a lot of property, you know, so the animals are able to, you know, walk around. And, and oh. you can tell they're very happy. They really love the place. Like, they're very like connected to to human touch and contact, yeah. So it, it was a very good thing to do. But I I, do, I like doing a lot of donations when it comes to uh, animal animal um, rights and stuff like that. I like doing donations to the sanctuaries because who's going to take care of these animals? Right. I want to rescue them, and you know you don't even understand how much food a cow eats or a pig eats. Like they eat a right. lot of food. Like the chickens is like yeah. okay cool and goats is cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when it comes to food. But when you're talking about like a pig and you're right. and, you, and on top of that, some of these rescue uh, pigs and cows and bulls are shoot up with tons of hormones and, and steroids and stuff. So these animals are large. You know, they're larger than they supposed they're to be bred to be that way. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. so when it comes to their food consumption, I mean, they can chow down, and right. you know they obviously they put them on a diet, so you know they're not breaking the legs and joints, but they still eat a lot of food, and I I really think that's a really tough job, and, and it takes a lot of heart, a lot of love, and a lot of compassion to take care of animals that's been rescued. People just because it, it's not like here in America, it's not common to just have a pig as a, a pet. Or, or a bull as a pet, like it would be pretty damn cool to have a big old bull, yeah. But you know, it, it's not common because, especially like here in Florida, like I live in Miami, I live in the city, I right. can't have a pig here or, or or no no way a bull, you know. So it's like, you know, but you, you see what I mean? It's just like I, I really like giving back to these to these sanctuaries just because it takes a lot to take care of a lot of these animals. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Doing great work, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. And uh, um, so I know you've learned a lot along the path. It's 35 years that you packed a lot in <laughs> over the 35 years. What uh, advice would you have if somebody is newbie, somebody's just getting involved and saying, wow, you know, I just became vegan. I'm feeling the benefits. I'm working out more, but I don't know how to work this whole thing. What would you? What kind of advice would you give those to who who are just coming into this uh, the plant based fitness and plant based nutrition um, arena? What advice would you give? What have you learned that really was a, a important piece of uh, your growth? The the be the best advice I could say is definitely find a professional because like the thing is is that 
like through, through me, th throughout my journey, like, yeah, I met Gary Roski, but I had to do a lot of research by myself. And this is why I did the transition. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I had someone who was like another vegan coach who was just like, hey, you know, this is your protein. This is what you need to eat. Da, 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 da. Like, I would have went vegan way faster. Right. And, like, do a lot of research. I'd have spent hours in the store, you know, looking at back cans and, and packages to make sure, like, you know, and, and I'm telling you, you don't want to go through that because your heart's going to be broken when you find out how much shit. Why? Why do they put that in there? So <laughs> many times, man. But so, it's it's a learning process and it gets easier the more you do it and just sticking with it. And there's lots of great sites. You know, when I was vegan 35 years ago, there was none of this support. So you're absolutely yeah. right. Reaching out to somebody, especially somebody who's been vegan for a while, who can tell you about like Happy Cow and how to find the right restaurants and what brands are, are good to look for and, you know, um, how, how to make some ethical choices and changing out. And then also um, fitness tips, you know, like I see people working out all the time that are in there five, six days a week and don't change. Six months later, they look exactly the same. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, and they're saying like, how are you doing? What are you doing differently? You know, they come up to me in a gym and, and obviously people are going to see your physique and say, all right, well, how do I look like that? You know, and it's not just genetics. It's not, you know, if people saw my genetics of me before I started, I was a twig. And, you know, now you got, <laughs> even at 57. <laughs> so it's, it's how you work out. And that's really important. And understanding how to train to get results can make a big difference. And I know you've been a great help to that. Hey, just training with you myself. I'm like, okay, that's training. <laughs> that's different than working out. Working out is maintenance. That's fine. If you want to just stay healthy, if you want to be seriously grow and look in competitive shape, you got to put the effort in. And, uh, but there are tricks. There are little tips that you can do to maximize those efforts. And, and clearly there's nutrition. And I, I know you've been, uh, a fan of the brand for quite a while and uh, thank you for all your help with clean machine but i yeah. think that is one of the things why i get behind this is because there are a lot of people out there who say god i wish i get could get results quicker or sooner you know i feel like i'm putting in a lot of work and i'm not getting anywhere and proper nutrition can be that little bit of tipping point to get you into quicker recovery better response for your efforts in the gym and, you know, that's why I go out and try to create some of these products to do that. And you're living proof, brother. You're amazing, Jake. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. And, and, and what I was going to add, too, is that, like, it, you know, if you, anyone needs help, me, I do have a free uh, free ebook that has, like, tons of information when it comes to food, nutrition, all that stuff. So just reach awesome. out to me. Yeah, can awesome. Speaking of speaking of that, we'll put that down in the links below uh, for anybody who's interested. Uh, we'll also post your Body HD links, but um, just tell people real quick how to get in touch with you, how to follow you on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, so uh, with Facebook and Instagram, uh, just type in my name, Corinne Sutton. That would be the fastest way of reaching me, uh, especially on Instagram. I'm more live on there. So just type in my name you'll see me there and then when it comes to my website if you're willing to if you want to have like a 10 minute free chat to see how i can help you uh awesome. when it comes to your vegan journey or whatnot just go to bodyhdfitness.com and of course you can use uh karen's code if you want to give him your code for any discount off of uh clean machine products yeah be uh kstcm so you can get like uh discounts on all of this <laughs> the KS, which is his initials, Karen Sutton and Team Clean Machine, TCM. So easy to remember. Well, thank you so much for having me, uh, having coming on the show with me and sharing. You're a wealth of information. You're doing amazing stuff for inspiring people. I know you've been an inspiration for me. Uh, I got on stage because of you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so. I do. People will 
to see a CEO who just becomes a bodybuilder and then starts selling products at the same time. You're like, and you hey, did so, great, too, man. Yeah. So thank you for all you're doing. I'm sure we'll have you back on at another time to get some more updates and stuff. And yeah, check out Corinne on bodyhdfitness.com. Uh, hit him up on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. And check back us with us in for next week. We're going to be uh, talking with uh, the owners of Dharma Bear Rescue, uh, Julian and Yvonne. So look forward to having them on and uh, we'll be having a promotion later this month. So check that out. And um, Cleaning Machines Eliminate is back in stock. It's so good. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> it's back in stock now. So check that out too as well. And uh, we'll be back in stock of clean, uh, clean, clean green protein uh, in a couple of weeks. So don't worry about that. We'll have it back in stock real, real soon. Well, thanks again, Karen, for coming on board and sharing your info with me. Uh, love you, brother. Thanks for all you do, my friend. No doubt, man. I'll talk to all you right. soon. Peace. Bye. -bye.